Where are we heading, Tim? Heading to a uh, nice little dune. The beauty of Siwa is that it's the gateway to the Great Sea of Sand. So just a few minutes outside the town and you're in this ocean of endless dunes that most people picture when they think of the Sahara. The crazy thing is, this is the Great Sea of Sand and it actually used to be under a great sea. It's called the Sea of Tethys. Sea of Tethys ran along the coast exactly as it runs now, but it started in Cairo and it started in Siwa. So that entire northern area was underwater. And the beauty of the Great Sand Sea is that it's functional scenery because you can ride it. And hell, we're riding with the guy who brought sandboarding to Egypt. The birth of sandboarding, well, it's funny, I was surfing in Agami and the back of the fin hit me in the head and I had four stitches. Somebody recommended, dude, get as far away from the sea as you can. Go to Siwa, it's beautiful. And I was out there looking at these dunes, these amazing dunes, you know, and I realized, hey, these are waves. We can surf these. The dunes are formed like waves built out of the wind, and uh, when you drop in at the bottom, you really don't want to hit the reef. Well, Tim f first came up with the idea. Nobody knew anything about sandboarding in Egypt at the time, and to the sea when people, what, what are these crazy people doing, getting these uh, pieces of wood and sliding down the dunes. So then he started bringing some more serious sandboards and the thing just took off. It just caught on. It's like Siwa's become the international capital of sandboarding. So riding the Sahara, rule number one. You gotta make sure you uh, wax the bottom of these things or else you're really not gonna go very far. Definitely gotta wax the board every run. It is sand, it's not snow. That wax really, really helps with the takeoff, gets you going. The base of the sandboard is different. It's formica, it's kitchen countertop. Rule number two, start slow. It's mostly uh, trial and error. I've already learned don't jump into the run. Ease into it. And you'll graduate to the big dunes before you know it. This is horrifying, actually. Man, I don't even know what my final words should be. Yeah, I do. 100% pure Sahara adrenaline. The feeling you get when you work the board rail to rail just right is very similar to snowboarding. But when you catch the rail just wrong, the fall has a feeling all of its own. And I coined this the Sahara tar and feather. Oh! Works best when you're wearing a lot of sunblock. What do you think of that, huh? That's a sand sandwich for you. The most noticeable difference between sand and snowboarding is the fact that there aren't any gondolas in the desert. So for the big dunes, it's good to know people. Ah, that's what I call a chairlift service. But I'd say the conditions here are a bit more consistent. I mean, it's pretty tough not to find any fresh powder. Most of the other deserts on the planet, you look at the sand granules, they've still got like sharp edges because they're just young deserts. The Sahara is the oldest desert on the planet, so it's like riding ball bearings. It's always a different ride. It's like no two waves are alike. And the other correlation is, is the fact that now everybody's in the Maldives and in the Indian Ocean or in the Pacific chartering a boat and going and looking for these awesome rides. We're doing the same thing out here in the Great Sea. Man, you gotta try that.